Notice girls sitting around, bored, and then when the cameras come out, oh, oh, the party starts, boom, boom, dancing around, hey, hey, I got moves, yeah, yeah. Camera goes, and that was like the exact opposite it was sort of like you when you walked into the club all bets were off no the no kissing and telling you were free to be who you needed to be and escape your everyday woes and problems and be actually free and there's such a performativeness in the culture now to be perceived in a certain way, right? Identity is everything, right? It's what's, you know, driving us all apart is, uh, you know, all this identity politics. There is no escape from, you know, this life anymore. Killer, killer, podcast. KillerKellerOfficial.com You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Send it up, here we go. Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct. Central London, as central as you need to be. Big shout out to the sharers and carers and everyone that's been supporting the podcast from the last 400 episodes plus. It doesn't go unnoticed or whatever number you're at, whatever time of the year you jump on and discover us. Big shout out to yourselves as well. Hold tight to everyone that's got the Kellervision app, free download, iPhone, Android, for your street culture, sports, whether it's mini docs, full docs, DJ mixes, or the notorious podcast, we got you. Um, big shout out to our sponsors, Hoddle Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys hideout. That's some NFT business for you. I'm in Saatchi right now, and we ain't just representing the new media that's out there. This lady that I'm sitting with right now is an original graffiti writer from New York, Manhattan, Long Island original. Furthermore, a fashionista, designer, vintage, acquirer, and more. She's her own brand, superior by the logo. She goes by the name of Claw Money Inside the House. What's up? How was that? That was particularly lovely, darling. <laughs> yeah, no. I said it up. And <laughs> you know what I've been most excited about this is you are one of the most, in my, in, in my observations, one of the most outspoken, fun playing characters in the graffiti scene. Oh my God, they need me. It would be so toxic. <laughs> <laughs> Where would the world be without a claw of money? I mean, <laughs> I think it was your man, Winston Churchill, that said, <laughs> if you can make someone laugh, it's like going on a, a mini vacation. It really is, though. It's um, transformative. That's the coolest thing I've heard on podcasts for a long time. <laughs> Quoting Winston Churchill as well, you know. Shout out to Winston. <laughs> and by which, at what point as well? Honestly, a big up one of Capono inside the place. Hold tight. Oh, my God, we'll get him in for a second. But yeah, got, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're well versed in the collaboration thing. You guys are working together at the moment. You have some US UK collaborative kind of connect right there. This is my, my baby doll, and um, I really believe in his vision. We're not working so. together as of yet, but I would like to. and... and I would like to help in any way I can, whether I, I'm working or just helping as a friend, as an advisor, because I can spot mm. raw talent yeah. when I see it, chap. Yes, and <laughs> big up that, celebrate that, All right? Uh, for those of you that are just jumping into this subject of New York graffiti, it goes without saying that Claw, symbolically for me, like coming up and, and, and just, you know, absorbing all the graffiti and all of its elements. One thing about what you brought to the table was the idea of the symbol, one of many people, but in terms of that claw, that significant, that distinctive look, it really surpassed the idea of, you know, stylized tagging. It's like, no, 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 this is about stamp, stamp, stamp. It was, it, it wasn't a re my plan when I first started bombing, I was doing these really sort of rudimentary pieces. And I was really trying to fashion my style to look like 
zephyr and sharp, sort of with these all these chips and stuff in it. Mm. Um, at the time, I thought they were really great. I was outlining with silver. Like, it was, just was bad. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? And outlining like, with silver, okay. Like, nobody does that. <laughs> like, it, uh, the overspray, it's just horrible. Yeah, like, yeah. Anyway, I was trying some conceptual stuff when I was young. <laughs> the dust look. And then I realized also it was like taking me too long and they weren't really coming out. And then I really needed to simplify. I went to a bubble style. And then I started putting the nails on, on the name. And it was through this um, beef that the, the claw sort of cemented in my mind because I used to paint a lot of trucks. The trains were done. Trucks moved around, a lot of people saw them. Mm -hmm. And some guy, so I started putting the nails on the W and some guy just like painted over like the CLA. And I didn't, I didn't know. I could spot my trucks anywhere where I was. I was like, oh, my truck's about to roll by. I gotta, you know, see my claw. This is before cell phones. Like, yeah, 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 imagine. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those so I'm like, oh my God, my truck's coming. Like, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to watch it like roll by. And I see this guy's like, Fucking shit over my stuff. And the W is hanging out. And I was so mad. But then I was kind of like, huh, look at that. It's just so like the essence. It's my name, but yet it's it has yeah. no letters. And then it also would simplify the amount of time I had. To, you know what I mean? Now, yeah, instead yeah. of four letters, I had one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And once I started doing them around, a couple friends of mine had kids and their very, very young toddlers could spot the claws on the wall. Mm. And so they, they'd say, oh, claw paw, claw paw. And so if a two-year-old could identify it Huge. off the wall, I knew that it was just so e easily digestible visually and that it didn't take um you know an expert eye to read the graffiti yeah, yeah. so i really just started to like expand on that and nice. do it upside down this way that way turn it into a strawberry into a burger and that is so sick yeah and unique as well what i caught from that there is the idea of having to put in the groundwork and develop this idea because Okay, you, you, the whole concept of like doing outlines with silver. You have to make the mistakes. You have to learn and develop as you go. It's not just a case of, oh, here it is. It's, I, I'm not sure if that's lost on the newer generation now. All the mistakes are what informs your next attempt. Yes. And all the mistakes and um, missteps yeah. are always correctable and that I think you're right I think there's a demand for perfection because of the aid of AI computers whatever um all of those mistakes are are made me the person I am today yeah and I remember when I did my book back in 2007 that when I would look at that early graffiti stuff, I would get a, a, a knot in my stomach, like, oh, it's so embarrassing, like, like oh, it's so like, bad. Dude, like, and then, sort of with fresh eyes after not looking at it for 20 years or so, I was able to sort of look at it and see, like, the, the sheer imagination, mm. the unbridled creativity, the... Tenaciousness, I'm not going to stop. Right, I, yeah. and, the, and just this whole, like, uh, you know, just trying new stuff. And then I looked at it and I was like, maybe this is some of the best stuff I've ever done. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because if you weren't looking at... It's true, because if you weren't looking at it as, as if it was yourself, you'd certainly be there thinking, yo, oh, the kid's got something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yo, you want the summit there. It's beautiful. Uh, how was New York at that time? The time of your early creation, the inception. Well, it was the, it was the 80s and New York was changing from, um, you know, New York was a middle class town. It was a working, working person's town. It wasn't just for the rich. Um, so it was affordable and fun and exciting and electric and... Um, dangerous and uh, just exciting and just filled with artists and musicians and, 
now it's so expensive. It's so prohibitive to mm. live in in New York unless you're from like a you know to come to New York as like a young artist to sort of like experience that mm. is. Uh, it's a very different type of young person now. Mm. And uh, that's why I think it's sort of missing some of that uh, spark it once had. Um, but it was uh, a great time. It was when hip hop was really transitioning from the outer boroughs into Manhattan nightlife. And I was there to sort of like watch all of that unfurl and you know, take part in all the festivities and... Talk to um, me about the, I want to know festivities. Talk to me about the festivities. Though. It's the festivities that intrigue me. You're talking 80s opulence here. Yeah. So I was underage when I moved to Manhattan to go to college. I was 17. But we were still going out to clubs and I didn't get really serious into nightlife until I was 21 and then I started working in nightclubs and dropped out of college, of course. As one does, of course. To write graffiti and, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Priority strike, Night please, people. Party, whatever. <laughs> and um, I was going to the Fashion Institute of Technology. I always was, like, very interested in fashion. I always was making my own clothes and stuff. And so when I started working in bars and nightclubs, I started making clothes. And that sort of brought me back into fashion, um, even though this is not what you're asking me. No, no, keep it going, this is beautiful. Um, nightlife was super fun and exciting. Hip hop was, was going from subculture into main culture. New York City was on fire. I was getting back into fashion and writing graffiti and life was fun. Oh, God, that just sounds like... <laughs> it's, it's you could truth. walk around with $20 in your pocket, 20 pounds in your pocket for the night, and that was it, and you would probably come home with five. Stop and like, it. You Yo. know, you knew everyone. And, and um, so working in nightlife was a real advantage to me with my graffiti because I knew all the bartenders and all these, like, neighbors. And whenever I would get into like you know a jam, I would just like run like hide behind the bar. Really, so really, yeah, yeah, it was great. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, my people. So, you know who you are. It's te technically, <laughs> were your sponsors of, of the eighties. So uh, thank you. You'll be credited at the end with all executive productions of. Uh, yo, how how do you? I'm forwarding the question a little bit because you did say something at the top which actually, it pricked my ears up because, like you say, New York isn't like that now. And, of course, there's always diamonds in the rough. But what we're talking about here is um, almost like the strangulation of that freedom that you experienced. That you guys are like the last bastions of, arguably, of, of that era of a, a, a level of decadence and... Uh, uh, and creative freedom. It, you know what I'm saying? Yes. It, you know what I notice? It, it's such a strange phenomenon. When I go to nightclubs, which is not very often because I'm old and I'm tired or whatever, but, you know, I've been known... I've been known to no, we pop just, in. Yo, no, we just have <laughs> events at Saatchi these days, Whatever, baby. daytime Come Saatchi on. events. Yeah, as, as you'll find does. me there. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I've been known to pop into a club or two. Yeah. I love to dance. I love to be around that energy, you know. This young man might be performing. I might, I might do a pop-in. Um, but I notice there's a distinct difference from sort of when uh, the culture from when I was young. Sort of, I notice girls sitting around, bored, and then when the cameras come out, oh, the party starts, boom, boom, dancing around. Hey, hey, I got moves, yeah, yeah. Camera goes, and that was like the exact opposite. It was sort of like you when you walked into the club, all bets were off. No, the no kissing and telling. You were free to be who you needed to be and escape your everyday woes and problems and be actually free and. 
there's such a performativeness in the culture now to be perceived in a certain way, right? Identity is everything, right? It's what's, you know, driving us all apart is, uh, you know, all this identity politics. There is no escape from, you know, this life anymore. And, and music and dance and uh, community is really what saves you. And, and you know, sadly... <laughs> Real fucking that's, talk. That's what we're missing, you know, and we need to remember that. I don't know, leave your phones at the door, type a party, some shit. Come on, let's get <laughs> wild, people! Yo, and <laughs> this is coming from a lady that, yeah, like you say... New York of its time, and this is only through, you know, <laughs> living through the documentaries and as a really young boy watching from afar, the whole idea of just dark. Manhattan was sleazy and scary and, and intense. But you know when you, but when you're alone at night writing graffiti and no one's around, it's so much different than that, right? All of a sudden, it becomes like your space and your relationship to it becomes so different. Your The ownership of it changes from sort of them to you. And there's like a romance, like with the architecture, with the street, with the outside world, whether, you know, not sort of a, a, a natural relationship to the earth with, uh, you know, flora and fauna and plant life, but it is sort of this very grounding feeling of being like, I am, you know, it is very cave-like to write graffiti, like, I am here, I mm. see, you know, this animal and I'm going to paint it on the wall and now, because of all this identity stuff, it's going to be my name and then, the city takes on a whole different feel. Mm. Yeah, you just lost me for about <laughs> three fucking minutes. Because you're right. Yo, even when there is this ownership, and I can't remember who I was talking to, but they, they, they made a really good, clear point that, you know, even when you hit a tag on the wall, that ownership is present. If it drips, that's your drip. That's you making even more of an, a, 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 an, an um, intention. That's fucking mine. You know? Yes. It's a beautiful uh, power. That's a, it's quite it's so empowering, isn't it? It is. <sighs> and I think that using graffiti as a tool to really, like, bolster your courage, your... Um, exploring, you know, like exploratory uh, ideas and challenging yourself. It doesn't have to be graffiti, but it need, you need those certain elements mm -hmm. um, to really sort of like grow and experience. And you can say, oh, well, I did that. I didn't like it. And that's, but I think that, um, you know, graffiti was a great way to sort of have this adventure, mm. like, at home. <laughs> <laughs> Hometown uh, adventure. So let's talk about these adventures. Give us, give us one of your most, one you've never ever, for whatever reason, you've never been able to really indulge in a story of, of a mission. Give me, give me an all-time claw classic mission story. Ooh. They were all missions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But give me one which was like, okay, I got one. Give me one that give me one that you were like, oh, that could have had fatal consequences. Oh, okay. Because okay. that's come okay, on. So there we're been, here to talk about it. There have it, right? been many, many, many fatal consequence um, situations because I am very clumsy <laughs> and I am not a strong uh, climber, jumper. Fence scaler, I can do it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I need like a little extra second. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I need to make sure my foot's really like in there. I don't know. I've slashed pants like jumping over fences because they get caught on the top, and Ugh. next thing I know, my butt's hanging out. Whatever. 
always had a safety pin with me in case of emergencies or two. I would keep them on my belt buckle and I'd be ready to go if I slashed my pants. Um, so one of the most, uh, I guess, it could have been like fatal and was really problematic was I was doing rooftops with these Guys, one was CL2, he's from the Lower East Side. Shout out if you're still out there, my darling. And Rod Rock from uh, Hell's Kitchen. You know I do. And they used to sell weed on St. Mark's Place, and um, they would always like see me like walking by and hear like a can rattling or something. And then like one day they were like, What are you right? And I was like, I'm caught. Anyway, we became like friends, smoking weed, like I after the bar, come meet me, like let's go, we go paint. And they're like, we're doing all these rooftops. And you jump on a phone booth, and then you'd step onto the top of the phone booth, and then you'd like sort of like pull yourself up, right? And so they're just, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like you guys do a couple on, and so. <laughs> They started, they were like, oh, you're scared, you're pussy claw, oh, claw's pussy. So I'm like, oh, fuck you guys, I'm fucking going up there. So boom, okay. I, I did it. I, I remember I was just like, you better not fall, because I'm so clumsy, okay? Oh, God. So I'm up there. This is when I'm doing claw and I'm putting the nails. It's not yeah. just the paw. Right, 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 right. This is early. Or mid, not early, early, like the beginning sort okay. of, the, of the real yeah, yeah. bombing style, right? Um, so I'm up there and they're like, hurry up, whatever, uh, we're going to jump down. So they, they jumped down <laughs> and I look down, it's, I don't know, good, uh, I'm trying to think in meters, right? You guys invented yeah. <laughs> freaking inches and yards and now you're on freaking meters, like we just flip it on centimeters, you, you know? how like, flip it on you. I heard after Brexit, they're going to go back to the, like, going to like count in bones or something like yeah 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 totally, totally. <laughs> using using bottle tops for coins you know, shit like that pebbles or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh 30 f uh feet in yards 10 yard ten, let's say 10 uh 30 meters high okay okay no no it's too high that's too big it has to be half of that okay 15, 15 meters cool 15 for good measure what is that like two f two floors yes Right? Yes, it is. It's enough to two, two, do two stories. A, two stories, right? Do yourself a six month two injury stories. In, in two hospital. stories. Yes. So they, I don't know. They like shimmy down this pole. So I'm like trying to like hang down to get my feet to feel something like the top of the sign or oh, something God. above the window, so I can, because I can't. And the fucking cops come and they go run and hide. And they're like, don't move. And I just, I was stand, holding myself on this pipe. Like, I think if I would have dropped down like two inches, I would have touched something. But I was like holding myself. And they drove away. And I just, I had no more strength. And I just like fell. Oh but I fell God. right on top, on top of the phone booth and grabbed on like. And then I got down to the <laughs> phone booth and then oh <laughs> I got God. down to the ground and I decided rooftops were not my thing. Oh. <laughs> it's just everyone's fucking nightmare, isn't it? It it's... was so fucking scary Ugh. because somebody must have called them and said these kids are painting on the roof or something so they looked mm. and I just, I guess they weren't looking like on the building or I was dark enough. They didn't, I don't know. <laughs> But as soon as they left, I couldn't hold. I just was like, boom. Yeah, yeah. That would have been me all day. <laughs> but I didn't. I could have fallen backwards and yeah. cracked my yeah. head open. Anything. No, Anything. here I am. Here I am. Does hindsight, <laughs> being the beautiful 2020 it is, you know, and having kids and growing up with a, a more appreciation of mortality, do you, do you ever think back to yourself and go, yo, what you, I wouldn't let myself or anyone do that anymore? I mean... I hear myself saying shit to my kid that I can't even believe it. I'm like, what do you mean you hate school? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you gave that guy the finger in the street? Like, yeah, yeah, or yeah. like, <laughs> I, I mean, 
yeah, I don't want him to do that. Uh, but he might. Yeah, yeah, His yeah. dad's a graffiti writer too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fucking get, get in. He'll probably be an accountant or something, right? Yeah, yeah, He'll yeah. be like, fuck these yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. We do just, just managing all your businesses, your craft businesses. <laughs> Doesn't that do turn up for the books, right? Uh, fashion. Now, you know, you, you mentioned that... The As you can see from my fabulous outfit. Come that's on. That's what my mother says. She's like... If anyone saw how you dressed, uh, they would laugh if I told them you're in fashion. I said, "Listen, I invented this." But, but hold tight. For those of you, are, <laughs> for those of you that are listening and not watching, this lady here is very much personification of she can wear what she wants and gets away with it. Like she could be wearing hot pants, wrist weights, and a tutu, and she's still rocking out. I am. I am. That's what I'm wearing right that's now. It. That's what she's wearing right now. So right get, on the, now. get on the get on the YouTube and check it out, baby. Um, but the whole like, idea, and I think this is what you amplify with within your fashion is uh, anything fucking goes. Make it, make it work, really cut. That's all you have to yeah. do. Fashion is fleeting and style is forever. And that's all you have to do is put a per little personal style. And, you know, fashion is always your friend. I'm guessing it's, we're, we're coming to like 25 plus years of you in the fashion industry, right? 30 plus years in there the industry, go. 20 years with my brand. That's the one. See, so half half, that works. <laughs> that works. Right, that works. That's one right. balance, that works. That's right. My brand is tw was 20 years old last year. That's fantastic, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, you can't. It's a legacy brand. I'm like Ralph Lauren. You are, really are. <laughs> you really are. And, and it's taken you into so many amazing directions yes. and collaborations, you know? Yes. Like you are, you are, you're an installation for a lot of people that want that cool kudos in in what they're doing. Yes. I mean, forever on a mood board, forever broke. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Mind maps, mood boards, <laughs> they all look good on, on paper, don't they? <laughs> Just getting it across the other side, it's a whole different thing. But you've managed, you achieve this. Yes. And you, you become this all-in-one, morphing, creative star Burst. I'm a niche yeah. business. I'm a niche business. We do a lot of things. I do a lot of branding and marketing work. Um, I do a lot of fashion advisory work. I do a lot of murals for both community and, you know, some corporate bullshit if somebody wants to pay me. I mm -hmm. mean, friends, friends. Lovely, lovely brands. Beautiful corporate. <laughs> Beautiful Wonderful corporate. brands that I love. Um... We are constantly putting together, you know, uh, you know, what were, what was breakdancing from 1982 to 1986 fashion wise mm -hmm. for, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, wheeling, dealing vintage and working on all sorts of um, fun fashion projects. I did a... Uh, nine collaborations last year with only female focused brands and artists wow and i we tried for 12 and whatever we did it we did 75 yeah. percent of them but uh Come on. Amazing. you know i'm really also like very much into empowering not just women young people but sometimes women need a little extra uh, push, a uh, little extra courage. Couldn't so agree I, I uh, make that a, a big focus in my work. Absolutely. That's the future. That's the future. And that's how you're moving. Nurture the babies. Love the babies. Love the babies. Uh, if you want to see some babies right now in London, you are in the Saatchi, absolutely owning uh, areas. Yes, uh, my ba all my babies are here. Yes, all the all babies these, are here. my babies that yeah. I like have been in boxes in my storage space that weirdly enough, COVID and uh, quarantine allowed me to sort of organize and refocus and kind of go back and look at this stuff because I was willing and dealing vintage, collecting, 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 um, all through the 90s. I was a stylist, fashion editor, costume designer. I used to use a lot of the stuff. I used to do a lot of mu like rap music videos and stuff would get left over or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, 9-11 happened, the towers came down, nobody wanted to do any business in New York. All of the videos, catalogs, um, work 
went to California, all of my vintage Japanese and uh, European clients stopped buying right. from everyone in New York w- weren't making the trip here. I'm not here. I'm, <laughs> I'm in London, darling. Where, Come on. Where am I? No. <laughs> Easily done. Right, they wouldn't interna- make the trip. They international man of the- mystery style, <laughs> a woman of mystery, go on, as well as go on. They wouldn't make the trip to New York. And I, at the time, I just started writing graffiti again. I was partnering with a young woman named Miss Seventeen, who is, in my humble opinion, in the top five, dead or alive, most smacked down all city, New York City killers mm. that have ever picked up a can of paint, male or female, she is hard. The, the current king hard. and has been reigning hard. Like Elizabeth. That's amazing. For decades. Come on. Come, Come on. on. Come on. Anyhow, claw money was born out of the ashes in 9-11. I was writing graffiti. Everybody wanted a claw t-shirt. Oh, make a claw for my t-shirt. New York was a magical place. Mm. After 9-11, it was the weirdest, weirdest thing. Of course. It was the last vestige of like the, the magical New York that, that yeah, I uh, reminisce uh, about mm. but people were really for like two years people were really helpful really nice people really bonded together we were like we can't let this city mm. die mm. like this is but I remember after 9-11 just thinking for probably a full year that I was just gonna die like in a random act of violence like we were gonna have war I'm gonna be on the train it's gonna mm. just like blow up I mean I was standing on my friend's roof smoking a joint when I saw the second tower come down like, mm, mm. It, it was deep. And um, sort of New York had like a, a little renaissance after because we were all just trying to hold on. And uh, we made it great for rich people. <laughs> and yeah. uh, come on down, come on down. Everyone get in, everyone get in. Does that depe- is that depicted in the pieces that you created for, for the Saatchi Beyond the Streets, as, as, as mentioned? Is that, is that part of, has that been the catalyst that's, got you to this point right now? Well, if you really think about it, I'm doing a lot of uh, hip-hop curations and, and uh, advisory stuff with hip-hop curations that's going on. I was on the advisory board at the uh, Museum of the Fashion Institute of Technology for their current exhibition that's mm. uh, Fly, Fresh and Fabulous, 50 mm, Years of Hip-Hop. I have a lot of pieces in the show. Heavy. Um, mm, when I get home, I have about 15 more exhibitions to put together. I have a lot of clothes. Wow. Whatever. I'm, wow. I'm, I'm the one. But Saatchi here, I really feel like this is a real... This is a, a real accomplishment for graffiti, for hip-hop, mm. uh, to be viewed at and respected by... Uh, an institution like Saatchi, this is a this is a real moment, moment. and um, you know I'm really honored to be included. I'm really honored to represent my culture. This is New York City mm. culture that I you know dragged here, um, you know, with all of my muscles, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. and that. This, uh, this subculture has become this global movement that everyone can be a part of. It's, mm. uh, it's a, real, a real honor. And um, I'm so happy for graffiti, yeah. <laughs> to oh. be honest. Forget about my clothes. Like, let's go. Yeah. Let's this go, is, team. That's right. That's right. And what a beautiful sentiment to end on. So if you haven't checked out Beyond the Streets, you know what it is. Saatchi Gallery in... Uh, Sloan Square, just off Kings Road. So come down. So I went until. Do we know? May 9th. May 9th. So you got time. You, know, you got time. It's, we, I free. went on to book tickets. It's completely sold out this weekend. Yeah, but, so uh, get on there and get your tickets. That's right. It's busy. You, you know, you see the movements going on out there. It's crazy. Um, Claw, thank you so much for thank joining you, us. Honey. Thank you. Thank you. It was so fun. So it fun. was so fun. We keep it moving out here, all right? Killer Killer Podcast. Ally in was out of fashion. Big shout out to Honor inside the place. Come on, my guy. Yes. Yo, sharing is caring. You know what it do? Tell a friend to tell a friend, all right? Remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they. All right? Don't <laughs> talk to anyone I wouldn't. You stay lucky, people. Peace. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>